Hi everyone and welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg and in this video I'm going to set up the Onyx R. We're going to connect up everything we need to get running including connecting the Lightburn software up to the machine and then to check out the machine in action I'll be running one or two little mini projects. With that covered, let's get started. The Onyx R is going to arrive in a wooden shipping crate. It's going to take two people to move that crate and two people to move the machine out of that crate to your work area. Inside of the crate, there is very thick, about two inch thick foam wrapped all the way around the machine. All the accessories for the machine are also going to be padded with foam and those will be located inside the work area of the machine. And lastly, the honeycomb is going to be in a foam compartment underneath the machine. The first thing that I like to set up on the machine is going to be the exhaust system. I'll just make note of the airflow direction on the inline exhaust fan, and then I'll use the two included five foot hoses and then hold those securely in place with the three included hose clamps. A few short minutes later, and the exhaust system is all connected. Let's check it out. Next up, I'll place the honeycomb inside of the machine. There's a convenient slide tray so it goes in the same spot every time. Well, you've probably caught on by now that getting the Onyx R set up and ready to connect up to a computer is very straightforward and very basic. The next thing that I'm going to do in the setup is purely optional, but highly recommended. And it has to do with the air assist pump that's located up in this corner of the machine. In my opinion, the pump is way undersized and it's very ineffective when I'm cutting through materials. If all I'm ever doing is engraving materials, that air pump, it'll do an okay job. On my machine, I've already removed it. Here's the tiny little pump. It's held in with three screws, one connector, and of course the air line. I'm replacing this pump with this much larger one that flows a lot more air. The side panels on the Onyx R, you just give them a little bit of a wiggle in the front and a little bit of a wiggle in the back. And then these pop right out. They are snugly in place because we don't want them to rattle around while the machine is running. There's a little connector that goes up to the switch in the front. I disconnect that. And now I have full access inside of this whole panel to service and replace that air assist pump. The original air pump was located down in this area, plenty of space to get to it. And where that pump was underneath it is a nice large hole. And that's where I run my red air line. And the air line that's already in the Onyx R, it's very soft and very flexible. And I can actually insert the red air line inside of the existing hose, making it uh, pretty fast and convenient to upgrade the fan in the machine to something that flows a lot more air. I'm going to connect up to the machine using the USB cable that is included with the machine. There's two cables and I'm using the longer 10 foot cable. And I'm just going to be mindful when I plug that into the back of the machine, there are two USB ports, one for the computer port and one for the camera that's located on the lid. We're going to be taking a look at the camera system in the next video. Now with that, we're now ready to jump into Lightburn software and auto detect the Onyx R machine. If you did a fresh install on Lightburn software, the first screen that you're going to see is going to have the software already wanting to uh, connect up to a laser machine. I've already connected up to laser machine, so I don't have that screen, but we'll see it in just a minute. The other thing is, my computer has already connected up to laser machines, so I already have the USB driver already installed. That driver is included with this USB drive, and that driver is called CH340. From here, I'm now ready to power on the laser machine so that we can auto detect it within Lightburn software. I'll turn the power switch on the back of the machine, and nothing's happening. What's going on? This is a brand new machine. Well, what happens with a lot of us is somewhere along the way, 
we bump the emergency stop button in the front and that cuts all power to the machine. When I reset that button, we've got life on the machine and my computer dings saying that it's already found something over the USB network. Let's go check this out and get rocking and rolling with NLightburn software. Before I click on devices, I wanna make sure that this drop down box says auto or choose. If it says something like a com and then a number, Lightburn software will not be able to auto detect the machine. So I'm gonna put it back on auto. I'll click on devices. If you're doing a fresh install of Lightburn software, this is the screen that you'll see minus any machines because you haven't installed anything yet. And I'm going to click on find my laser. Gives me this dialog box, I'll click next. It's gonna go up there and look for some devices and it's reading everything. And from what I've heard, either one of these will work, but I like to use the serial USB connection. And I'll click add device. And I'm going to rename this as the Onyx R. And for my machine, because I work with so many of them, I'm going to put the last number or letter of the serial number. And it's also going to give me the work dimensions that are pre-programmed into the controller inside the machine. And this looks correct. I'll click next. And what is the origin of your laser? And what light burn means is, where does your laser head home to? Now on the Onyx R, it's going to be the right rear. So I'll click on right rear. If you get this wrong, the machine will still run. It's just that when you send a project out to the machine, everything is gonna be mirrored and reversed in any which way direction, depending on which one of these you have. If you've got that, just delete your device profile for the machine and just refine your laser, making sure that you've got this in the correct spot. I'll click next. And here's a brief summary of everything. And it looks good. And I'll click finish and OK. And from here, it should click over and automatically connect. And it says that it's ready. And the first thing that I could do is actually go over to the move tab. And right now, my distance move increment is set to one inch. And I can click these buttons here and see if I've got movement on my laser head, which I do. So really it's just that easy to connect Lightburn software up to the laser machine. Pretty cool, huh? Hey, and just like that, we're ready to start our first project. This is one of the things that I love about these all-in-one laser machines that include everything that you need to get up and running, other than if you choose to upgrade the air assist pump, which is of course highly recommended. From here, I'm going to take a, a piece of wood that I've got from the Dollar Tree. This is going to be eighth inch thick of some unknown wood. Usually it's a basswood type material. And I'll get this placed inside of the machine and I'll use some of my red magnetic strips to securely hold the wood in place. And then we'll jump back into Lightburn software and check out the graphic for today's mini project. I've got my first graphic loaded in and we'll zoom in a little bit. And this is going to be made up of two layers, one being an engraving layer and the second being a cut layer. The engraving layer in blue, let me move over to cuts and layers. That'll be a fill layer. I'll be running at a speed of 225 millimeters per second with a power level of 35%. The red layer, and I click on that, is going to be a speed of 15 millimeters per second at a power level of 45%. On each of these, only one pass is needed and we probably wanna see what my line interval is. And I'm running at essentially 350 lines per inch on the engraving. I'm going to fill everything in all at once. This all looks good. And from here, I'll navigate over to the move tab and I'm going to manually index the laser head over the work area. Let me put over a couple of spots. That looks good. And now for one of the really cool features on the Onyx R, I'm going to press the focus Z button and the laser head is going to automatically focus down to my work material. Let's check it out. Perfect. 
And I'll zoom back just a little bit, and I'm going to see that this little cross here is the actual location of my laser head. If you don't have this little uh, cross here for the actual laser head position, go down here and click on this button, show last position, and that'll get this to show up. Now that is in the, the upper right hand corner. So I'm going to grab my graphic and I move that to the upper right hand position. That looks good. Now, of course, if I had the camera already calibrated, I'd be able to superimpose a picture of the work material on my computer screen and I wouldn't have to go through this step, but setting up that camera is going to be in the next video. This looks good and I'm going to hit the frame button just to make sure that the labor laser head is going to be traveling over my work material. That looks good and I'm ready to turn the exhaust fan on and my air assist pump and we can get started with our first project on the Onyx R. Here's the completed first project. I did give it a little bit of a wash with some LA's Totally Awesome, and I really like the results. Check out all of the nice fine detail. Oh, and I almost forgot to show us the back of the first project. Everything is very nice. There's no scorch lines, and that's having to deal with the honeycomb that is included with the machine. I'm still marveling at the amount of detail that this machine is able to produce. And by the way, I never even bothered to check the mirror alignment on this machine. I got it unboxed, set up, and we just saw I connected up to Lightburn software, and we got some really great results with this. The next project that I'm going to do is going to use the same graphic. I am going to delete the hang hole off the top, and the material that I'll be using is 3 8 inch solid pine board. I've got the work material back inside the laser machine and instead of placing my magnets on top of the work material, I used it on the very outside perimeter of that block of wood to kind of uh, fence it in place, if you will. Once again, making sure that my work material doesn't move around while we're doing our cutting and engraving. Inside Lightburn software, as we see, I kept my word and I got rid of the little hanging hole on the top. And when I control A and select everything, I also changed the size to take up most of the width of that board. So we're now at four and three quarters of an inch. And we'll check out my engraving layer. Same speed, I did bump up the power level to 43%. I, I want to engrave just a little bit deeper. The lines per inch is the same, and of course we're going to do all shapes at once. When we go on the red cut layer, we're going to be going at the same speed, but I bumped the power level up to 70%, and we're going to see that I'm going to do three passes. I think that should be enough, and maybe only two passes will be needed. This all looks good. I'm going to go over to the Move tab and make sure that I've got the laser head focused down to my work material. That is such a cool feature. I love that. And I'm going to hit the frame button just as a reality check to make sure that the laser head is always traveling over my work material. And that is looking good. So from here, all I need to do is turn on the exhaust fan and the air assist pump. I'll tune in some background music and we'll watch our last project being made.
Holy cow, I'm getting awesome results with this Monport Onyx R. Just check out this crazy detail on here. And I didn't even wash this with the LA's totally awesome. And in fact, that nice brown patina, I'm gonna leave that on and actually seal it in. I saw after two passes, it had cut clean all the way through. And I don't have any charring whatsoever. Once again, I didn't do any cleanup on this piece. And there's no scorch marks on the backside either. I still can't believe the amount of detail I'm getting with this Onyx R out of the box without any mirror adjustments. I think a lot of that is thanks to the autofocus feature found on this machine. But just check this out. This looks so good. I think I might actually make a couple more of these. Today's video was a lot of fun and the only thing that I have left to do with the two little mini projects is to give them a couple coats of a spray polyurethane. Join me in the next couple of videos where I'll be setting up and calibrating the camera vision system and setting up and running a project using a rotary unit. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, please help support the channel by giving this video a like subscribe to the channel or ring that notification bell. Not only is it a great way to help the laser channel grow, it's an awesome way to connect video content like this with other great viewers just like you. Well, until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.